And with excitement, allow me to introduce to you today's guest. He is the director of sales for Play IQ, an accounts payable automation platform specific for the restaurant industry. Greg Alpatov, my man, are you feeling unstoppable today? Oh, I always feel unstoppable, especially today being on here. Yes, man. I cannot wait to get into today's conversation. So the purpose of today's chat is to learn a little bit about who you are, uh, to learn about the backstory of Plate IQ, and to kind of just dive into the benefits of Plate IQ. And we have some calls to action at the very end. We're going to teach you uh, how you guys can get three months free Plate IQ. Um, but before we do that, like always, it's a tradition here at Restaurant Unstoppable to get that motivational ball rolling with a success quote or mantra. What do you got for us? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if it's necessarily a quote, but I, I definitely live by this principle. Uh, Eric, when you were a kid, did you, did you play video games? Absolutely. Okay, cool. I'm a big gamer. So um, I always think that life is, is more about like being the best version of yourself as opposed to competing with others, right? Everyone has their own process of how they, how they kind of come up. So like when you were a kid and you played racing games, right? Like there was a way to like race against your friends. And there was also a way to race against like the ghost of like, how, like your last performance. So I always try to be like that. Like I try to see like how fast, how strong, how like, you know, how good was I at, at a certain task and how could I be better going forward. I love that. Man. I love that. And it's the mentality that like you, the only competition you have is yourself, right? Correct. You, you, you only have to beat the version of yourself yesterday. And if you focus on that, you will never stop growing. And I think the, the, the moral of that is probably don't focus on what other people are doing, but just focus on what you're doing and trying to be a better version of yourself, man. Great, exactly. way, great way to get this thing started. Um, so where does it make sense to start the play at IQ story? Well, first, why don't you just tell us a little bit more about how you are, who are, sorry, who you are. And you can tell us how you are too, if you want, um, and how you got onto the play at IQ team. And then just give us a little of that backstory of, of play at IQ. Yeah, no, uh, great, great, great segue into it. Let's, let's get right into it. So um, uh, Greg Alvatov, I'm from New York City. I worked in, in hospitality. My first job was in hospitality. Uh, when I was 15 years old, uh, you know, obviously wasn't necessarily the most legal thing in the world, but I worked as a busboy for a restaurant making cash, which is great. Sophomore year in high school, I had like $300 a week and I could buy like the sneakers that I wanted. And um, yeah, it just taught me like hard work and, 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 and discipline and, and being able to basically get whatever I want through my effort, right? Yeah. Um, There's a work around that 15 year old, um, you know, getting people under the age of 16 or 17 to work. It's called employing your children. My parents, I was nine years old when I started, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I definitely wasn't working for my parents, but you know what? That's probably probably better because like I, I'm a workhorse and I, I learned a lot of skills from working that early. But anyway, um, I just love the hospitality industry. I love making people happy. And then I, at some point I, I became a waiter. I, um, you know, there's tons of different things that I was doing. I went to college. I did a couple of different things. I necessarily didn't necessarily know that I wanted to be in hospitality. Um, when I was around 25, I uh, got a job working for uh, a friend, a friend of mine, Eugene Rem of Catch Hospitality Group. I did a bunch of different roles there. Um, and then transitioning from that, uh, I knew that there was certain like issues that were weren't being solved in the hospitality industry and i knew that kind of like early on in my 20s the next step in my life i wanted to be in software i wanted to specifically be in the software sales of selling a solution that was meaningful and that really helped people right so uh, when i was looking into different companies i ran across plate iq and this was like really early on in their process like before they had like a like a sales team I've and everything seen this for us well, how how old was plate iq or how like when did when was plate iq founded yeah, Flate IQ was actually founded. The idea was founded in 2014 okay. um, by uh, uh, our co-founders, Bavuk and Ram. Uh, they both have like extensive tech background, but like their passion actually always lied in the hospitality industry. And I'll get to that. I'll yeah, get yeah, to that yeah. in a second. I'll tell the whole story. Yeah. So this is around 2014, 2015 that you come across Plate IQ. So I actually came across Plate IQ in 2017. Okay. They just finally brought it to market, like really started selling it in like early 2017, a few months before I like joined uh, the company. Prior to that, it was just early adopters, right? The idea, there's so much to discuss, right? Like so many good things. The idea was something that resonated and I'll get to that in a second. So a bunch of like early adopters, like uh, uh, Thomas Keller restaurants, they, they adopted it right away. Um, I, I saw the platform. So what we do again, I want to just kind of 
make sure that like I'm, I'm covering all, the, all, all my grounds. What we do is we digitize paper invoices, essentially. We automate the entire bookkeeping process for restaurants. So instead of having restaurants take these invoices, read each line, a million different SKUs, enter that into their accounting software, their inventory software, with our platform, they could literally just take pictures of these invoices we use optical character recognition and machine learning to digitize those invoices, convert them into text, and then automatically, based on the way they have their accounting systems or inventory systems set up, map it to their chart of accounts or inventory list, and then provide them a clean export directly into those systems, ultimately eliminating all of that grunt work that they had to do. Why it's relevant, when I was looking for like what my next step was in my career, I re specifically read this like intro of like what the company does. And I remembered when I worked for Catch Hospitality Group that I would watch like my executive chef and my general manager who were, you know, really talented people and they were making over six figures, spending like a third of their day entering these invoices into, into their accounting and purchasing system. So I said to myself, I'm like, I could sell the hell out of this, right? This is like real stuff. This is solving a real problem and it's definitely a market fit. Um, so that's kind of how it started. I, you know, didn't have much experience in software sales. So I started entry level, worked my way up. And now I pretty much manage the, the entire go to market, you know, sales team. Yeah. I, so just listening to you talk, I couldn't help but think, um, so inception 2014 and 2017 was when people really started to, when you started to push and try to recruit you had, but first you were just servicing your early adopters. Um, but I feel like we can learn, like, I feel like the restaurant industry can learn so much from the tech industry as far as starting up. And I feel like for some reason in the restaurant industry, people have this image of, I need to start with a brick and mortar giant, like my vision, but you can start where you, you are with, which is a minimal viable product, which is whatever it is you're going to be feeding people right? Just start getting that into mouths, like in start with your friends, start reaching out to like restaurant tours who can, are willing to be your early adopters and support your vision by letting you do pop-ups and things like that. Like kind of like what you guys did with Thomas Keller, where he's, he's an early adopter because he's using it and giving you feedback, but he's also supporting you because he sees the value in it. So if you can see, find people that, that see the value in what you're creating, just start small where you are. And then get early adopters and have those be your brand, you know, be strategic about who your early adopters are, influencers, people like this, right? What's going through your mind as I'm sharing this? So I, I love that. That's, that's a great point. And there's another element of what we did too, right? Like originally um, my co-founders are, are brilliant and they had like an idea um, to get into the hospitality industry. And originally the product was actually not what it is today, right? Um, uh, our CEO developed something which we still kind of use and it's still a good idea um, that was completely different. So he went around and he basically uh, pitched the idea to a couple of different people in, in San Francisco the, to, in the restaurant industry. And they were like, yeah, this is interesting. This is great. But, um, and then what he was, was like, okay. Idea? What was the original idea? It was actually like a, like a slack for, uh, for restaurants which is a great idea because of like the health inspectors, like a real, like real powerful intercompany communication module for the restaurant industry from like the corporate offices to the front line, to the kitchen, to all that. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's so another, different. yeah, I think that's another perfect example of, of the lean startup approach, right? Like you start thinking you, you might be something. Um, and that's the, the beautiful thing about starting small is you can, you can evolve because your vision is going to change. Like you, 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 you go into a situation with a vision thinking it's going to be a certain way. And then it almost always changes over time. People change over time. Um, you, your influences change over time. Um, so I think that's another really cool thing like that, just being ready to kind of pivot and give the market what they want. Uh, so to your point, right. It's like for, it's like advice. It's like good advice for all entrepreneurs. It's like ask the market what it needs right now. Right. It's not necessarily always about like, like creating this, like having this vision of like what you think should be. Sometimes it's as simple as like, hey, like, what don't you have that, that, that could benefit you? Like, and then that's really what happens. So like our, our, our co-founders were asking like, hey, um, you know, what do you like, what do you need right now? What's like the biggest pain point? And then everybody kept saying that it's invoice processing. Like it's a, it's a mess, right? You get like tons of paper, tons of, you know, PDFs being emailed. You got to take all of this. We're spending a ton of time. Either we're hiring bookkeepers that are, you know, bookkeepers make like 25 to $40 an hour, just processing invoices into QuickBooks or e-tech or any of the inventory system. And a lot of people kept saying that. So like, you know, 
they literally went back and just redesigned the platform around the needs of the restaurant industry. When did they start going back and redesigning uh, based off these needs? How long did it take them to, to absorb that data and realize that there was a, an opportunity just streamlining that data entry, invoice entry process? Well, they're pretty scrappy. I mean, it was pretty, pretty instantaneous, right? They went, they got the feedback. The feedback was good, but like they kept asking people like what, you know, what, what the biggest pain point and this kept coming up. So they went back and they literally, I think they built it over the course of a couple of weeks and, and then brought it back to like some of the, some of the people in San Francisco and they, and, and they signed up. They were like, yeah, this is great. This is exactly what we need. You know, it was also the first to market to do something so specific for the restaurant industry. Remember the restaurant industry, that vertical, our hospitality vertical operates like no other vertical. There's like no one else that gets like 15 different variations of the exact same item and it could be spelled differently. Right. Yeah. And it all goes to the same place. Right. So it, the, the need was there. So it, it was, it was, it was just like the universe kind of brought it all together and, and the product was created. And then, you know, five years later, here we are, you know, over yeah. 10,000 restaurants. All right, we're back. And you kind of just set us up with the idea of where Play IQ came from, uh, your involvement with Play IQ. Uh, and now I would like to spend the, the majority of our conversation going forward with actually just unpackaging the benefits of Play IQ and, and why we should consider this tool for our, our own business. Um, you mentioned that when you were working, was it Catch? Yeah, Catch Hospitality Group. Yeah. Catch Hospitality. Dude, if I ever started a restaurant group, I feel like I'm in competition with them. All my friends call me Catch for Catchatory. But anyway, side note, uh, Catch Hospitality. I love that. Um, but you said that when you were working there, uh, one third of their time, you said approximately one third of their time was just pushing paper data entry invoices. Um, how accurate is that number? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like going off of my gut, but I specifically remember they were using a system called eTech at the time. And they, and, and you know, they uh, different now. They got acquired by Landry's, but um, – and I just remember like the, the GM that I work for and the executive chef was there just crunching these numbers, you know, putting it all in. And I remember back then just thinking, just being like a, like a young 20 something year old. And I remember thinking like, here, there's a problem here, right? Like, like, why are they, why aren't they on the floor with the customer? Why aren't they, you know, focusing on creating new brilliant culinary uh, uh, dishes, right? Like, why are they doing like manual data entry? That's crazy, right? Has no one come up with a solution where you could literally just take pictures of these invoices? Yeah. Right. And so, apparently somebody did. Yeah. So um, that's why this company appealed to you because, you know, and I think that's, a, honestly, there's a huge, I mean, part of the, the, the mission of this podcast, this episode right here is to teach people about the story of Plate IQ, but it's also, I think, important. Um, you're, you're a hospitality professional. And I think that, um, it's really important that if you're in this industry, if you came up in this industry and maybe you don't want to open your own place, but you're, you're growing as a professional, there's so much opportunity, but beyond working in restaurants within the hospitality industry, because there's so many tech companies. And I know that they're looking for people who know the industry because there's a special language you have to be able to, to, to discuss. So, I mean, just using you as an example of, of, of an avenue you can take to be successful in your own regard within the restaurant industry, like getting into sales, getting, and I know you guys are growing right now. This side note, if you guys want to join Play IQ, they're probably hiring. Hit uh, me up. Yeah. What's going through your mind right now as I'm sharing this? I, I mean, some of, some of the people that have been at our company the longest and just, just being in the industry, understanding the restaurant tech, most, most of the most successful tenured people have come like to some extent from like, you know, from the restaurant industry, like for example, like our like our our uh, marketing head, you know that you spoke to, you know she worked at a at a bagel store for many years, and she just gets it. Like the yeah. hospitality industry just makes people scrappy. Yeah, and like I mean, I think you're, and there's always new innovation. I mean, again, you're a perfect example. 2017, you joined the Plate IQ force, right? Three yeah. years later, man, director of sales like that you're a success story man and, and i feel like there people need to get outside of the traditional paths of growth within the restaurant industry because there's so much opportunity out there for sure and i i think it's 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 yeah obviously i worked really hard of course and i saw the opportunity there but like the company was like the, the problem that we solved was bound to be successful as long as we, we executed it the right way. Yeah, so it was, really, it was, yeah. Bring it back to that problem. What was the, it, let's define that problem one more time. I think we have a couple of times already, but let, really let's, let's deliver home. You know, yeah. the, what's the problem? It was, it was that the hospitality industry did not have a solution for paperwork. 
did not have a solution to bring analog processes into the digital world. Yeah. What Other would, industries at that point already did. Hospitality yeah. did not. What were right. the unique challenges specific to the restaurant industry that other industries maybe don't have to deal with when it comes to invoicing? Yeah, for sure. Great, great, great question. Just the way that they receive invoices, right? Other industries, if you're running like a hedge fund or a bank, you're getting most like clean invoices via PDF or they're coming in electronically. The restaurant industry, five o'clock in the morning, the bread guy is coming in and just like delivering a bunch of things, dropping off invoices. The person that opens the restaurant in the morning is touching it, putting it somewhere, it's different hands. It's being stacked on a paper, oil stains, you know, everything, right? And, and then second to that, um, the SKUs, the sheer amount of SKUs that restaurants have to process, right? You could be getting, you know, tomato in one way and tomato in another way this, you know, the second day. Uh, Cisco could send you an invoice with like a hundred different line items on it, right? Small quantities of delivery, right? Because it, goods are perishable in the restaurant industry. So you're not ordering a month in advance, like 14,000, you know, uh, quantities. You're ordering you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah. From right? players that might literally be like rolling up in their tractor, you know, and Correct. loading like produce from a basket into your hands that they picked that morning. And I don't even want to know what kind of mud and muck is going to be on that invoice. It's probably going to be written. Right. You know, cause like, Correct. so you, you, like we, we, we deal with a lot of, I don't know, unique things. I feel like just specific to the restaurant industry. For sure. Also like fine dining establishments and some QSRs as well, like the sheer uh, variety of like the types of things that could be ordering. Like if you run a steakhouse in the city, right? Like, like for example, like catch, right. Which is an excellent, excellent restaurant. I recommend everybody go there. If you're, if you're running that, like you're, you're ordering like, like, like expensive cuts of steak, you're ordering sushi from Japan and, 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 and Spain, you have a wine program, you have a full liquor, like liquor program. So you're getting like, a, like an array of everything. And like, somebody has to like, understand all of your general ledger codes has to take all these invoices, understand where on one invoice, where, where, where that wine has to go, where like this cut of beef goes, where the sushi goes, like, it's just, it's a whole thing, right? And then you add an element of like human fatigue and human error to it, mistakes, like, like we actually have the data behind it, right? Obviously you, you would, you, you would think we do, right? Like it costs somewhere between 10 to $20 per invoice to process correctly with the approval policies, with human error being associated to it, right? With the different line items, entry into QuickBooks or whatever software they're using. You add an element of an inventory software that you're also using, right? So it gets expensive, right? And we bring that number down exponentially. Yeah. So how has Plate IQ evolved? Um, I mean, you guys, you, you obviously, we talked about you guys evolved to be kind of the slack for the restaurant industry, which evolved into being, you, you found a pain point with processing. Um, but since, since identifying Great question. your new identity on uh, 2017 or 2016, where you pivoted to the focus on, on invoicing, from that point to today, over the past three years, how has play iq evolved great question great question thank you one word payments payments we went into the fintech side of doing things right what and do we became fin what is fintech uh financial technology gotcha thank you so uh so like literally we are the premier payments platform for the restaurant industry specifically focused on the way right because like we're already solving the invoice problem so you have all these invoices in Plate iq now how do you pay them right? Do you pay them the traditional manual way of cutting checks to your vendor, mailing it out? Or do you have an electronic automated solution that ties back into your accounting system? That's, that's kind of why we pivoted and we built a really powerful platform for that. So you started so, just to be data entry to, to streamline the process of getting the, the information from the piece of paper to the accounting software that you're using, um, whether that be QuickBooks, Restaurant 365, Compete, uh, Market Man. Um, do those are all, all those examples of you know things that you would be integrating with or data entry yeah or, cor yeah cor cor correct so, so just just getting it into those those platforms to now being able to process the payment and click to pay exactly so everything from processing the invoice accurately and we could talk about that like how how we differentiate from other things on the market um to like paying it 
right? Pushing all of that information, automating all of that, streamlining that into your accounting system, pushing all of the line items, updating your SKUs and inventory and recipe costs in your inventory system, right? And then also analyzing data from our perspective, like trends of like how your how your purchasing is going, like how is how is your prices at one location varying from other location? And like we have some big ideas as to how we're gonna take that data and bring it into the new world by actually allowing you to compare you know, we are the biggest player in this space. We have, you know, at this point, somewhere around 13,000 restaurants that use us across the entire United States. How are we able to leverage that data to help you make better decisions to you for you to understand how are you purchasing as opposed to like, you know, restaurant X up the block, right? Like is Cisco charging you like X amount over, you know, over market or are you paying a good price? Like all of this information is very, really, really valuable. Data comparison, I'm going to say. So yeah. Started with just data entry, being able to streamline that process to evolve from payments to now data comparison. Am I, did I miss anything? Or is there, there's a, an element there that ties into inventory management where, or does it not? It, 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 it does. It does. So we don't do inventory ourselves because like the consumers want the best in class product, right? They don't want it all in one, right? A lot of solutions are trying to, trying to like, in my opinion, like, there's a lot of shortcomings with that. Like there's a lot of people that are like, we'll do everything for you. Right. We're not that we are best in class, everything having to do with your invoices from start to finish. Right. Um, and then there's great inventory solutions out there that we integrate with and we allow you to not have to do any manual data entry into those inventory systems. So that's our value proposition. Give me an example of a, a platform that you would integrate really well with that. If, if from, from, snapshot of the invoice to end end of the life cycle of what your your you know what your, what your service provides with this integration is that, am i making sense right now yeah of course through that life cycle yeah so two there's two avenues there the first is the accounting system which every everyone uses and the second thing is the inventory system on the accounting side obviously you got your quickbooks right you got your quickbooks online quickbooks desktop quickbooks enterprise right that it covers that probably covers for 60 percent of the market of restaurants right yeah you got your once you go up market to some of the bigger chains that we also work with right again we work with mom and pops all the way up to you know uh publicly traded massive restaurant groups right you got your sage intact you got your oracle net suite um different types of sage products 100 200 300 uh microsoft dynamics solomon microsoft dynamics gp you got you're all over the place right yeah that covers the the gl side of things on the on the inventory side of things the back office solution um anything you can imagine if you're asking me for like what i what i think is one of the best solutions on the market currently um, it's a company called Cogswell. It's pretty new. It's a cloud-based inventory system, which a lot of things aren't cloud-based yet on the inventory side of restaurants, which makes our integration with them se more seamless. And I also think it's just like the best product on the market currently. Yeah, um, they, it was found mm -hmm. they came, yeah, you, you were just about to answer the question I was asked, so go for it. Yeah, so they, they came from hospitality, also like, like people that really understand the hospitality industry. Uh, one of their founders comes from Compete, which is another another great solution, uh, but you know, you know, compete is now uh, 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 private equity and and all of that, and then he basically left and he started his own company, uh, bringing bringing restaurant inventory into the digital age, right? Beautiful. Um, supplementary to that, there's also you know like you know, uh, restaurant three sixty five, compete, uh, crunch time. Uh, Yellow Dog, the list goes on and on and on. We could, in, we could integrate with all of those systems that we do, right? I love it. Um, so I think we're painting a really good picture of far as like what Play IQ is and what it can do for you. You mentioned real quick that there are some differentiating things that, you know, separate you from other similar solutions. Do you want to get into those? Yeah, for, for sure. Um, so, I mean, we, we were the first to market and we, we by far have the biggest market share in the industry, right? Which allow us to do certain things because our revenue model is different. You know, we have the highest level of accuracy, the, the, the fastest processing time, right? And that's, not, that's just simply because our OCR is best in class. We're literally using three different engines that are available on the market, like from Google to Amazon that are, that are like, like the, the best OCR. And we've created our own OCR engine that's reading it uh, like at the same time. And then algorithms are literally comparing it to see the probability of this particular uh, word being picked up correctly, right? 
supplementary to that, we also have like 400 people on the back end that's verifying each and every single invoice. Each and every single line item is being verified by somebody on our team. And we have people all around the world, depending on the time of day that you upload this invoice. So like, it's a game changer, right? You're gonna get your invoices back to like the 99.9 .9 percentile of accuracy within 12 hours, right? Awesome. Other solutions that have come up, like sort of copycats of like Plate IQ, are, are just, can't, just can't do that. Like they're, they're, not, they're not there, you know? On top of that, we're like the best in class payments platform specifically designed for the restaurant industry, right? So, you know, you could make electronic transactions, ACH, we could cut the checks on your behalf um, through, through, through our platform, right? Uh, and you could also make virtual cards. We have a virtual card program as well, which basically enables the operator to get up to 1% back on all of the transactions that they process through our system, through our virtual card program. That's awesome. So you mentioned earlier that the, obviously there's a benefit in the time you're saving, but I'm also curious, do you have any data to, that kind of explains the benefits that you get through just better communication? And now like, just because the invoices are so much more accurate, right? Um, I mean, how, how has just doing the job more accurately, how does that affect the bottom line? Well, I think you bring up two separate points, right? So the first thing is like, I recommend everybody go cloud-based as much as they can for everything, right? Like you're, the thing is with the invoice process, whether you're a one location, you know, mom and pop passion project, which I love, right? Those are the best restaurants in the first place. Yeah. Or like you're like a group of three, four, five, 50, a hundred restaurants, you know, there's a certain element of like approvals, right? Like who's looking at these invoices, who's verifying it, who's looking at the data, who's making sure your vendor is charging you the best possible price, right? And that takes time, right? It goes from hand to hand to hand. You get these invoices all on the cloud accurately, whether you're like on vacation in Japan, which I don't know if anyone's on vacation currently because of Corona, but like theoretically, if you were, you know, you could approve that invoice in real time anywhere on, on you know, on planet earth, right? So that adds to the level of, 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 of uh, automation as well. I love it. And then the second point that you bring up is the accuracy, right? Like, you know, like it's a, it's a crazy manual grunt work process that truth be told, nobody wants to do in the first place. Like, you know, who the hell went to college thinking like, Hey, like I want to process invoices for a living. Right. Right. So that adds to the element. If you're not excited about what you're doing, you're going to like slack off. Like there's going to be errors. Right. And chances are, if you have somebody that's really good, that's processing your invoices, whether it's a frontline manager or a bookkeeper, if they're really good at that job, they're not staying in that job for a long period of time. They're moving up to like a controller role or a CFO or like a, someone more, you know, to use more cerebral effort. So like, it's a problem. And like, yeah. we increase the accuracy and we, you know, we automate that process. Well, yeah. I mean, even so um, a little bit of a teaser here. Yesterday, you joined us live in the network, you and Kyle Johnson, your director or VP of product. Uh, if your product. Yep. Yeah. Join us live in the network and you guys demoed the platform for us and just being, a, a, to, being able to a, a, attend that and to see the, the behind the scenes and, and the, the, the little detail, the things you can do, but there's, there's a feature with that, that that's built in that allows you to basically budget spend. So I feel like that's another way that, that you're making money that you can create a uh, hard stops within the budget. So if you're delegating the purchasing to somebody, um, and you know, you, you want to keep it things lean. You can literally say like, this is what you're allowed to spend, right? That's a feature you can build in. I mean, that's just one thing that comes to my mind where now you're, you're not just, you're, your spending is not going to get out of control. Correct. You're, tr you're tracking it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, there's, there's two things to be said there, right? The first thing is like, because we have all this data, we could set like parameters. We could set like triggers uh, for future invoices coming in, right? So if your vendor, you know, if, if you, if you buy something from, from vendor X and that, and you have a contract price with that vendor, like of $25 a pound or something like that, you could set like a pain tolerance of like, Hey, like if it variates within 5% of that contract price, fine. I don't need to be notified it, but if it goes above 5% for ever, any, any reason, whether it's up or down, right. Down is also advantageous. You can make decisions like yeah. on a special or something like that or up, which is going to hurt your bottom line. I need to be notified of that right away. And we literally send you a push notification through like whatever medium that you're, you're accessing the platform with of notifying you of these changes. Right. Yeah. I love it. We're back. And, um, 
before we wrap up and start to you know give you guys some calls to action to learn more about Plate IQ, uh, what are some of the newest features that you guys are just rolling out? And like, what's the future? What are you excited about with Plate IQ? Yeah, so I'm excited about our our, our expense management platform. We're bringing again uh, the whole focus of our platform is how do we build a uh, AP solution specifically for the hospitality industry, and that's what we've done. And now we're we're like we're hitting like the antiquated players where it hurts, like the, the concurs and the expensify that aren't necessarily a good fit for the hospitality industry by building a system specifically for restaurants and hotels, right? Where like you could, you could uh, assign certain thresholds for uh, 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 plate IQ cards where like a manager could only buy certain categories of certain things, right? And if they see that threshold, they get notified, uh, you know, their manager gets notified. Um, so, Really, really excited about that. I'm more, what I'm more so excited about is like, how are we going to leverage all of the data that we have, right? Both on a macro economic level to help like the overall consumer in the United States or help like different people understand what's going on in the food and beverage industry. And also on the micro level of how we could help our, uh, our, our operators that use our platform to make better decisions, right? So we've, we, since we are like the biggest player in this particular space, we're constantly being approached by different publications like the Wall Street Journal. Like, hey, can you, can you tell us like with, with Trump going berserk about like the, the, the Southern Wall, what's going on with avocado prices, right? Yeah. With Beyond Meat going public, how is that affecting beef prices? Like we're the ones that have that data, right? And we're the ones that yeah. are leveraging that and, and providing value to like, you know, consumers around the United States. So I'm super excited about that. On a micro level, like I'm excited about the marketplace feature that we're going to launch, which is going to allow operators to literally compare what they're paying the same, what, what operator Y across the street is paying that same vendor. So, and make better decisions there. I think the vendors are going to be a little upset about that, but you know what? We have to service our customers first. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how yep. that goes down. Um, I've really enjoyed this conversation. So, uh, I already kind of alluded to it earlier. Uh, yesterday, uh, Greg and Kyle joined us live in the network to demo the platform. I'll tell you what, man, that was a really great demo. We had, I think, three or four folks from the network joined us. Uh, Bruno was there. Uh, his last name's escaping right now. We had Adam Johnson. You know, Adam Johnson was there. Of course. Uh, two dudes that are very sharp when it comes to technology. Um, and Bruno, man, was putting you guys through the ringer, asking you some really great questions. Love that guy. I'm, I'm sure you were excited to have your, uh, your backup Kyle there to help you out. Uh, the tech guy. Um, so uh, your call to action right now, I want you guys to head over to restaurantunstoppable.com slash 700 in 68 that's today's episode we're going to link to that video the demo right there uh for you guys to watch that and keep in mind i'm i'm going to be hopefully we can create more content in the future uh, for me the direction of restaurant unstoppable is going deeper into these relationships the reason why i'm talking to greg and played iq um is because they were recommended four times organically on the show in the past 150 episodes and they earned the right to be here to, to, so we can learn more because people, because you're doing right by people and people are talking about you. Um, sure. So um, if you want to learn more about Plate IQ, we're, we're planning on building a whole private group for restaurant owners that use Plate IQ. You can join the conversation, uh, best practices. That's what we want to do. But right now, um, head over to restaurantstoppable.com slash six sorry, 768. That will be where we're hosting the video of the demo we recorded yesterday. And if you want to be a part of future demos, make sure you join the network because you can literally join the conversation like, like the folks that joined us yesterday did. Plus, if you join the network and you sign up for Play IQ, you're going to get three months free Play IQ services. What, what, approximately, what's the value of three months of Play IQ service? Approximately. It it de it depends on 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 invoice volume, but it's it's on the low it's, side on the high side. Give me an example. You know, it's like it could be anywhere from a uh, hundred dollars per store up to two hundred fifty per store. Times uh, three. Times three. So yeah, you know, so, a thousand. Yeah. Yeah, uh, great deal. Um, there's benefits to being a part of the network. Um, so get over there and um. Is there anything else that we haven't talked about or any other calls to action that we need to know about before we say goodbye? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just conclude with this. We had an, I think we, we had an excellent, excellent demo yesterday. A lot of great questions were asked. So your listeners should definitely refer to that. 
Um, there are a lot of things about the platform that are very specific. So Bruno was asking a lot of specific questions to his particular business that we were answering. I recommend that everybody get in touch with, with myself, my team. Uh, um, and then if you guys want uh, uh, like a one-on-one -on -one demo where we could literally discuss your particular pain points, go through that and show you how we're, we could be a solution specific for your needs. That's absolutely what you should do. Um, and then, yeah, uh, we're, we're offering an incredible, incredible incentive by end of year for all of your listeners, as long as they refer to this podcast as, as where they, where they got like the information about it, they'll get, you know, and they use our, our full feature set, they get three months free, which is, which is great. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, all right. Uh, I think we're good to wrap. I, I, there's nothing else that comes into my mind. How the, the, we're going to have a special link, right? That people can click to go enter or they just mention restaurant unstoppable. That's all I have to do. I'm sure we'll figure it out. We could okay. do both. Cool. Like, cool. They, we'll figure I'll it tell out. My whole sales team, like anybody that says restaurant unstoppable, they get, they get, they get that it. deal. I love so, it. Beautiful. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Uh, I think we're good to wrap it up. I just can't say it again. Thank you guys so much for um, joining Appreciate us. Appreciate you, man to give us more information and thank you for being sponsors. Um, you, you sponsor the show. I can't say thank you enough for your support. I wouldn't be able to do what I do without people like you seeing the value when I'm trying to create and restaurant unstoppable and supporting the mission. So thank you so much. I think we think it's great what you do and we're, we're fans of the show, like independent of like, you know, just you bringing us up or, or other people bringing us up. We just love it. We love what you're doing. You're bringing information like to a wider audience about the restaurant industry and just trying to benefit operators, which is exactly what we're trying to do. So it's great. Thank you for being you. Empower and transform the industry. That's the mission, man. You make it easy. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. What's going on unstoppables. And I hope you uh, enjoyed today's episode and the demo that we recorded with Plate IQ. If you guys are interested in Plate IQ, remember, mention Restaurant Unstoppable and get three months free service when you do. But you've got to be in the network. So head over to the network, join the network, and then get your free three months with Plate IQ when you get that done. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you around. Peace.